Hey guys, so I'm in a 2019 Tacoma. We had a customer come in today with the check engine light on. I got the code reader hooked up to it and I'm coming up with a PO174 uh, lean code. And if you scroll down, there's also a PO171 for bank one, two lean. So we got bank one and two, two lean. And with these type of codes, a lot of times, you know, many technicians will get confused with uh, the lean codes and how to diagnose it. And the reason why, I'll show you in just a second. So on this Tacoma, PO171 is the code. Look at all the possible causes. Intake, fuel injector, mass airflow, coolant temp sensor, fuel pressure, exhaust leak, bad sensors, PCV valve, wiring harness, ECM. The possibilities are extensive and so a lot of people get tripped up on that. But all you have to remember is read the fuel trim numbers, the long-term fuel trim. That's all you have to do. So I want to show you a trick that I use to get these codes figured out. And all I need is a handheld scanner like this. I don't need anything fancy. But what I'm going to do is right now the truck's running. So I'm going to go to the data stream and we want to look at the live data. Specifically, we want to look at the long-term fuel trims on bank one and bank two. Okay, data's pulled up. I'm gonna scroll down until I find the long-term fuel trims. Keep in mind the engine is running right now. All right, so here we are, guys. So we're just gonna ignore the short-term fuel trims. Just look at the long-term fuel trim, bank one and two. These numbers are very high, 39.8% on both. Ideally, you want a number between zero and 10%. Basically, all this means if your long-term fuel trim is at zero, basically your engine's running perfectly. Uh, it's getting the right air to fuel mixture everything's great anything above zero then we start running lean once you get up to you know 20 percent, 25 percent up in that range you're starting to run really lean what's happening at this point is that the car is having to add 39.8 percent more fuel than normal to try to compensate for a lean condition but what could the cause be because we've already seen that there's so many different options so how are we going to figure this out well all we got to do is take a little drive and watch the numbers and see how they respond. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, here we're just idling. Uh, the numbers are still really high. So let's start driving and see what happens with the numbers. Okay, so I'm giving it gas. I'm accelerating the engine and the numbers are going down. That tells us something right there. Okay, I'm accelerating. I'm at about 20 miles an hour driving down the road. At constant acceleration, these numbers are within normal range six percent on both banks if i let off the gas then the numbers go back up get back on the gas the numbers go down what this tells us is that we have a vacuum leak going on here guys and how do i know that well the reason is simply this a vacuum leak simply means that you have air getting into the engine which it's not reading through the mass airflow sensor so the car basically can tell okay we're getting too much air than what we should have coming through here so the car starts adding more fuel to compensate for this to try to get the right air fuel mixture that's why you get these high numbers when the numbers are high at idle and then they go down during acceleration that's because when your engine's running at you know let's say 700 rpm the presence of a vacuum leak has a much larger effect on the total air volume coming into the engine. In other words, that vacuum leak is a greater percentage of the air coming into the engine when the engine is spinning at a slower speed like 700 RPM. Once you start revving up the engine and you get up to 2,000, 3,000 RPM, now you got a whole lot of air coming into the engine. And so the presence of that vacuum leak is a lot less significant at the higher RPM. So then the fuel trims start going down that's a vacuum leak guys if it were any kind of a fuel issue fuel pump issue injector issue something to where it's not getting enough fuel then you would end up having the opposite to where when you start accelerating instead of those numbers going down they're going to go up higher because the more you rev up that engine the more it's starving for fuel so the more you accelerate it it starts running leaner and leaner and those percentage numbers go higher and higher but because it goes down instead of up i know it's going to be a vacuum leak so let's pop the hood and check it out and see what we got so let's check the vacuum hoses here. Let me get this cover on. Let's see here. These look fine. This looks connected down there. It's 
all this little stuff back here. Let's follow this hose back here. Okay, check it out, guys. Exactly what I'm talking about. Looks like a vacuum hose that's not connected. I'm gonna connect this and see if it makes a difference here. All right, got that plugged in. So let's get this cover back on and go inside and see what we got. So now I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna reset the codes and go from there. So let's erase the codes. Start it back up. Let's go back to the data stream and see what kind of numbers we got. Check engine lights cleared, engine is idling. Check out these numbers, guys. Long-term fuel trim on both banks is now 4.7%. That's great, that's, that's exactly what we wanna see. So let's go drive it and just make sure that the numbers stay good while we're driving it. All right, so I'm driving down the road and accelerating and these numbers are low, 1%, 4%, 5%, they're under 10. So I'm gonna say we got it fixed, guys. At this point, at this point, I'm simply just going to instruct the customer to pick it up and drive it. And if they have any other concerns, any other lights come on, bring it back and we'll check and go from there.